Hello there, Internet Mogwai here, and I got another Legends of Rune Terra video for you guys today. Today, the background is quite fitting as we are going to be playing Lux. We're combining Lux with a forgotten control machine, one that got nerfed to Oblivion in the recent balance patch, and that is one of my favorite champions ever. In fact, he is uh, my third favorite champion in the game. Went from first to third, you know, uh, Yasuo and uh, Twist of Fate kind of like took him over. Uh, especially after he became so mainstream. Maybe now that he's more edgy, I, I, I may be more geared towards uh, Heimerdinger. You know, I, I can I can call whoever champion I want my favorite to be, uh, yeah. <laughs> that That's a way to introduce this video. So, basically, uh, you guys may be shocked because I am uploading a gameplay video uh, with a deck tech and everything. A new deck, in fact, just a few days before the expansion. And that's because uh, I want to... You know, get my deck building groove back on. Uh, I haven't uh, built any decks in a while because I've been waiting for the new expansion to hit, but I don't want to be completely rusty when the new cards come out, and I want to make sure I'm still sharp and analyzing the meta and, uh, you know, having my own personal twist at things and uh, try to encounter uh, the popular list out there with uh, some cheeky tricks. And that's what this deck is about. I wanted to play Heimerdinger again. I really enjoy the new Heimerdinger because the new Heimerdinger is a champion that you actually... It's not just elusives with extra steps. Like, it is about, you know, this crazy value engine that will just generate you uh, robotic bodies as you play spells. And I love combining him with Demacia because I get to play him alongside Lux as they both benefit uh, significantly from Flash of Brilliance. Flash of Brilliance is basically one mana advance for cost stages for the level up and or fi final spark of Lux, which is very relevant. It's also one mana uh, burst speed create a uh, Storm Lobber for Heimerdinger. And it's just a great card because of that. It, it really allows us to make up for the lack of tempo that this sort of strategy has early on by getting a very cheap play that uh, also gives us a six cost spell which could be a very high impact sort of spell for the late game as well uh flash rebellions did get nerfed as most of you know it used to be three mana now it's four uh it's definitely worse than it was before but in this sort of list it's still very powerful because we have not one but two different champions a full set of each that benefit from it significantly still. So I wanted to run these two together and see if I could uh, make Heimerdinger great again, basically. Uh, hashtag MH Machaga. <laughs> hashtag Machaga. So uh, Heimerdinger has some really neat tools, and this deck has some pretty cool anti meta techs that uh, I'm gonna explain. Like, it, especially like. Cards like Ranger's Resolve, Purify, and Rising Spell Force. Some of these may seem a little bit off, but I, I am going to uh, elaborate a little bit on them. But first, let's tackle the core. Like, what the hell is this about, right? Well, we have a spell-based deck that tries to uh, get tremendous value in the mid to late game through Heimerdinger and Lux. As you guys can see, our spell count is extremely high. It's over 9,000 at 29 and just 11 units. Most of our plays are spell, and a lot of them are actually burst speed. We have a combination of reactive damage-based removal in the forms of thermogenic beam, mystic shot, but also single combat, which may seem like it's a little bit weird in a deck with so many spells, but we actually do have a very easy time developing a board state with units, especially because we are running a full set of remembrance. So we're running that, and then we are also, I mean, that's, that's it when it comes to like actual removal. Then we have protection with prismatic barrier and and Rising Spell Force, which, you know, may seem weird to call this protection, but I, I will elaborate in a little bit on that. I just, I, I want to save the best for last. I want to keep you thinking about why, why is he, why is this card even a thing here? Nani? You know, I, I, I want to build up the dramatic effect, right? So, uh, let me do that. Triple Succession alongside uh, Remembrance gives us a total of six spells that are spells, but translate into units which is something that we need. We need board presence to be able to take on unit-based decks and or apply pressure to other slow decks as well. We have a couple of Vanguard Sergeants as a three drop that we can go for that gives us a six mana spell that allows us to get the elusive turret from Heimerdinger or instantly level up and or generate a final spark with Lux alongside the ability to just capitalize on our board just filled with turrets and all sorts of stuff buff it and go for potentially multiple attacks as you guys can see we're running a couple of relentless pursuit relentless pursuit i think is criminally underrated with heimerdinger uh it has been for a long time because it, it kind of like heimerdinger demacia just got 
overshadowed by Heimerdinger Ionia. Uh, but now that the, the strategy is not so reliant on elusives, the archetype is inherently slower, and I feel it's much more resilient and potentially threatening with Demacia. And Relish Pursuit plays a very big role in this because it allows us to, first of all, surprise the hell out of the opponent because most people do not expect this card when facing an archetype like Heimerdinger Lux. So the surprise factor is really strong. It wins you a lot of games and it really allows us to capitalize on Heimerdinger's ability to just flood the board with units, right? And because we have ways to buff and we have stuff like Rising Spell Force, we get some very, very nasty surprise lethals on our opponent through this card here. But that's not all, right? We also are running a series of protection spells, like I mentioned earlier, and techs for the meta. I am taking three decks into consideration. The top three decks, and another one that's considered to be tier two that I also think is pretty prevalent. But the top three decks right now, in my opinion, from what I'm facing, are Ezreal, with Twisted Fate support uh, in Bilgewater. Then you have uh, They Who Endure with Callista, and some variants run Sejuani, some run uh, Elise, depends on how fast the deck is designed. And uh, third, we are obviously facing a lot of Ash Sejuani. Ash Sejuani could be considered the queen of the meta right now. And I have a series of cards that are meant to counter every single one of those matchups, but it can be flexible in the others you know, to a certain degree, and those are Ranger's Resolve, Purify, and uh, Rising Spell Force. So, Ranger's Resolve is there for the Ezreal matchups. Most Ezreal decks are Bilgewater decks, so they love Make It Rain, Twisted Fate AoE effects, all sort of ping effects. Uh, Ranger's Resolve can really help us keep our uh, turrets alive, and also helps us counter, at least to a certain degree, the likes of Riptide Rex, which is very predominant in bilge water based builds, which is why we're running this card as a 2 of here. It can also be clutch protection for Heimerdinger as well, for like specific removal, like a Get Excited or something random like that. Uh, we can survive that with uh, just one mana, and I like it a lot in this build because of that. Purify is for they who endure, basically, but it's also good against the uh, bilge water fizz elusive decks running around. Uh, it's really strong there. It can be useful in Ash matchups as well to counter a Frostbite effect onto one of our own units for a surprise combat trick effect. And it's pretty much useless against Ezreal, which, you know, I can't really say much about that, but it's just not good there. But it's good against pretty much everything else, and that's why we're running it uh, here. And the fact that this two-mana play can just completely counter a They Who Endure, that's basically the only way we're losing that matchup unless we're getting smorked. Uh, early on, so this card is extremely valuable there. But Rising Spell Force may seem like the most odd one in the basket, right? This card is actually meant for Ash Sejuani. Not only does it help us uh, potentially counter a Frostbite, more importantly, it helps us counter Culling Strike onto Heimerdinger. So if my opponent goes for Culling Strike onto Heimerdinger, Rising Spell Force, or onto anything that's Frostbitten, by the way, because Rising Spell Force gives plus four attack, even if uh, Lux was Frostbitten, I can go for Rising Spell Force and I can counter a Culling Strike this way. Uh, Rising Spell Force also has some neat synergy with Relentless Pursuit and our challengers in Mage Seeker Persuader, amongst others, as we give them plus four attack and quick attack that round. It's a, it's a solid card that's been underrated for a while, and it actually really puts in the work in this meta. People don't expect it, and you guys are gonna see in the video, in the gameplay that I got for you today, that it actually did put in some neat work. And that is uh, basically the deck list right there. I went on a little bit of a ramble here, uh, closing in on nine minutes. But I, I wanted to explain this deck well, since I, I put a lot of thought into it. And uh, it's it's been working out really well for me. I've been having a blast. You know, nobody else is playing Heimerdinger, so you feel pretty edgy. And it's just fun, man. Heimerdinger is just mad fun. When he's not everywhere, all over the place, just spamming elusive turrets, he's actually a super intriguing champion and a very rewarding one at that, too. So... Uh, I recorded some gameplay today in Masters Ranked, and uh, it was a live recording session, which is uh, different from the usual, so you guys are going to get more details on my plays, so let me know what you think about this format, as you can definitely expect more of it in the near future. And that's all I got to say. Have a solid day. Thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for daily Legends of Runeterra content. Hopefully you enjoy the matches. I'll see you guys tomorrow. All right, so right off the bat, we are running into Endure. And we do have a nice little trick for this archetype. We have a couple of purifies in our deck. We see Heimerdinger there. We definitely want to keep him. I'm going to drop the Rising Spell Force. And uh, I like Secession. I think I'll keep Single Combat as well. It's a nice card to have. Flash of Billions is the kind of stuff you want to see with Heimerdinger in your opening hand. 
bit of a slow starter here, but uh, turn two, three, three tends to do the job. English. <laughs> uh, we could see a curse keeper. This will halt him. Unless, of course, our opponent has a ravenous butcher. In that case, we will halt nothing, but fortune for us, that is not the case, actually. We're gonna go for an open attack here. Highly undoubtedly. Highly un <laughs> Hi Highly. Highly. How do you. Highly doubtful that he. I, I, I can't even English right now. I don't, I don't even know how you say that. I, I guess highly unlikely. There we go. I was trying to say undoubtedly. <laughs> unlikely. English. I had a brain fart there. Oh my god. Uh, I could. I could single combat to trade that for that. I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of it though. Especially when I can do that more so as a surprise later down the line. I'm gonna float my mana. Keep my options open, see what I draw. I'm not threatened by an open attack, really. I could just trade into Callista. That is, like, absolutely irrelevant. Okay. Well, that means, uh... That means we have to single combat, correct? question is what do I prioritize I think I think uh, made secret persuader into single combat is the best means of action here yeah I kind of have to go with that I'm gonna wait for the attack to be declared so that I can actually prevent a little bit of extra damage you are guilty do I care about killing this as much? For the time being, I mean. What are you hiding? Try me, I dare you! I mean, this is not a trade that I'm against, right? I can rebuild this board. Yeah, I'm gonna do this. Rent a little bit of damage there. And I'm gonna pass over because uh, this deck lacks like proper interaction here. Evidently logical. I can very rather safely develop Heimerdinger here. Another day in paradise. And now I'm gonna go for a succession because this will grant me a turret, and I can start applying pressure. This one has Fearsome, which means it cannot be blocked by these. So we're gonna go for a full hit. Now we also, we have like potentially double Flash of Brilliance into Thermogenic Beam, which I really like. I can't double Flash of Brilliance. I just have to worry about, yeah, I think Flash of Brilliance Fresh, fresh of brilliance into Ranger's Resolve into Thermogenic. The don't determine themselves. I am a bit worried about a Fury of the North, though. I'm gonna go for the Ranger's Resolve to protect against the Vile Feast. I uh, really hope he doesn't have a Fury of the North. I mean, if he had a Fury of the North, I think he would have gone for it immediately. I don't think you think about that for a second. <laughs> it's such a straightforward play. Like, I, I would be pretty shocked if... If he took, like, more than a second to make that play. Like, if he has Fury of the North, it's a, it's a direct counter to this. We do have two Purifies in this deck, though. Uh, Fury of the North would be backbreaking, though. Like, we, we, we need to kill this. Okay. We really needed that to die. And we need to prevent... Oh! Oh! 
That is a huge, huge misplay. I believe that is a ridiculous. That that is that is a really, really, really bad call. I would have preserved the uh, the never click collector there. I don't agree with that play at all. Like I said, two purifies in my deck with access to card draw with progress. They hear we're gonna go for a uh, full on attack here. But they're saplings. My saplings. Come closer. I don't bite. And now we play Lux. Because with Lux, we have access to uh, Progress Day, which means if he plays a They Who Endure, we can try to draw into a one mana Purify. You won't suffer long. I will block like this. Even though I am taking two damage here, uh, I do want to get rid of his Elise. I want to really uh, just. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. That's all good. What seems to be the problem? Spiders. Can see the Mr. Linger. Spiders and uh, you know, creepy old men on canoes. That's the problem. But we may be able to do this fine. All right, I believe this is the time for progress day. We have access to flash or brilliance as well. Beautiful. It's so beautiful. Um. Pushing my limit. No purify though. We are gonna right off the bat go for the. With the spark here. Getting that challenger in there too. That challenger could be very, very key. Good old flash of brilliance <laughs> brings you back to the old days. Yes, yes, again. I, think I just want to go with this now as well. Now we spread out. If he has a, like Ruination is basically what I'm playing around here. Like if he has Ruination, we, uh, well, I'm not playing around it technically, <laughs> but I don't have a present. <laughs> we have Brothers Pursuit back up there to uh, smack him. Would it help if I apologized? Uh, maybe a little. And we have Purify. We have two copies of Purify in this deck precisely because of that matchup, also because of Elusives potentially, because now Heimerdinger is no longer the elusive counter, just because he's technically, or he was, uh, Elusives with extra steps, right? We're no longer a counter to Elusives, so being able to uh, deal with Elusives and shut down They Who Endure gives us a really solid matchup against uh, They Who Endure, because without Purify, we're actually extremely vulnerable to that, right? Uh, fortunately, we do have the tools to deal with the Neverglade Collector rather easily, but it, it just feels really bad when you're basically dominating the entire game and then you just lose to a huge They Who Endure, right? So, Purify, well, it is a bit of a liability for Ezreal. It's it's kind of like a... It, it's the, I don't know how it references, but it's, it's basically that kind of poison that you got to take. And you can quote me on that even though it doesn't make any sense. So, yeah, I'm going to stop talking and we're going to play another one. <laughs> All right, uh, definitely wasn't expecting to queue into Shadow Isles again. Uh, this is, this seems to be a completely different deck though. 
Ephemerals, I would assume, but with Freljord. I wonder if they're still playing They Who Endure. I mean, that that's not like... That's not that crazy. I'm gonna drop Lux and Rising Spell Force. I'm gonna keep Thermogenic Beam and the Mage Seeker Persuader as well. Oh, there's a Purify. Uh, if, if we are facing They Who Endure, we have the answer. I think that's a good Thermal. Yeah, I think that's a good Thermal. That thing's gonna become a 3 3 later down the line, so. I'll just bop it. It's a problem, so I'll just bop it. I think I can, I can drop the Mason Crusader here. Mages can't hide from me. So, I'm obviously going to hold on to this Mace Seeker Persuader. Uh, the moment I play... The moment I play a 6 mana spell, I can get that health back. So, I'm I'm good again. I will, <laughs> I will always take this hit. I'm going to play a reactive. Because right now, if I go for a Mystic Shot and he has a Glimpse Beyond, then he can actually just completely counter me. So, I'd rather have this. Uh, man, that, that's really... That's really bad luck though I, I can't um yikes uh i'm gonna pass yeah we're drawing like multiple copies of the same cards and these are not cards that we need right now i mean we're buying a little bit of time okay there you are there's my boy all right so i would assume that this sort of deck there. I'll spot him. i mean i don't know i i, I honestly don't know what he's running like he still could have grass of the undying it, it is an ephemeral deck it seems so i i, I want to i want to be patient everyone's a garden all right come, come this way I'm gonna go double single combat to prevent the card draw. Um, I don't get to play Heimerdinger this turn, but preventing him from drawing more is exactly the kind of plays I need to be going for. Answers, I have them. If if I want to like minimize the the chances my opponent has an answer. It's Let's let's be chill for a bit. That's obviously dangerous and spooky and many things, but like the fact that I have double relentless pursuit. We shall pierce their treasonous arse. All right, we need to do something about this. They have a they. I mean, why else would they be playing Froyord, right? We're taking a big hit next turn if we don't do something. This seems weird, but I, I actually, I, this, see, this is bad, <laughs> but I, I, I need the three attacker. I, I, I need the, uh, fear, I need the fearsome blocker. I just paid three mana for a three one. Fan fucking fantastic. I mean, I may as well attack. If he wants to block Callista into that, that's fine. But uh, I, I will be getting my damage there, at the very least. Yeah, that, that felt horrible. That felt really bad. Also, losing two single combats this early on feels pretty terrible as well. But, man, I just really cannot let him have that card draw. And I, I gotta... See me sooner or later. But from every fallen, a new seed. The sun is shining. We should too. We should too. This is menacing. Uh, so but we just need to withstand a little bit of damage here. Shine with me. This is the same as taking the hit from that. And uh, I, I, I will just grab this. this, this. And 
that somewhere now. I can't, I can't let him go. I gotta go for the rubbers. Nice, 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 nice. Pushing my limit. Nice, we got a good one there. Okay. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. Nothing escapes my watch. I have to attack you and then I have to blast you. Simple as that. I'm a groundbreaking invention to date. <laughs> Drag you down. Attack with you. Attack with you. Go like that. The fearsome makes it so that he can only be blocked by Callista. We still have Purify backup as well. But I really, really don't want to resort to Purify until uh, I see They Who Endure because there's just no other reason why you would be playing Froyord. Like, you, you don't just slap in Froyord for Avros and Sentry. I mean, you could, but it's just the Hecarim is just off because everything else about this deck is Screams and Endure, you know? I'm not even sure I'm worried about Callista so much, but I guess I am. I mean, what can he resurrect with Callista? What would he be resurrecting here? The Neverglade Collector, right? Yeah, that's the problem. That's the big problem. I'm taking damage. But I mean, if things get out of hand, then I would just, uh... A beacon through the dark! He's running out of gas, like he does have the Phantom Prankster there, which is obviously concerning, but I'm, I'm not that low. Let's pass here. Bang. There you are. Alright, we're going in. Okay, so it's pretty simple. We take you down, we take you down, we take you down. Yep, we prevent the card draw and we lock him down for the win. Get him. Get him. Purify. Purifying. All right. And now we have the attack. We drag you. We'll save Demacia from magic. Demacia doesn't need saving. Drag you here. You have no alibi. You have no alibi. Respect. Did you? <laughs> Calculate it. All right. Did we win? We did, Lux. We did. Purify. That's why we play Purify. We didn't even see Hecarim. So basically, it's as if we face Endure twice. So hopefully, uh, we get a different matchup this time around. But at least Purify proved its worth. That's why. Like it, it was like the most recent uh, like change to the deck, right? 
Because th there's so many aspects of this deck that are like really geared towards the meta. The problem is there's a few two ofs and uh, sometimes, you know, I, I, I may just like not draw the right answer, right? When I need it. It's, it's a card game, right? But I, I wish I could be a little bit more consistent. But this meta, this meta is like very diverse in that sense. And uh, it's one of those cases where like so much diversity, but at the same time, like such solidified positions for the top tier decks. I'm not sure if it's the best environment. Because there are, like, some of the decks that are up there are pretty oppressive towards other. Even Ash, right? Like, I, I'm not going to complain about Ash, but uh, I'm just, I'm excited for Ash to move on and have something else at the top, basically. I, I guess you could say that for any deck, right? But it's hard to, like, build, you know, these cool, like, uh, Lee Sin or Shen decks with uh, Stan United. Stuff that, that I wanted to mess around with because Frostbite just hard counters that so hard, right? Uh, but yeah, I'm, apparently I'm, I'm on the, you know, <laughs> I'm on a mission to just have monologues every time I have a game. So yeah, I'm going to stop talking again. <laughs> and we're going to go to another one. All right, speaking of Ash, here we go. So for this matchup, our Rising Spell Force is actually a really, really neat card, right? The problem is we need to draw it. I'm gonna drop Lux. The reason why Rising Spell Force is really neat is because it enables us to counter Culling Strike. Purify also can be used to on a on a follower to undo a Frostbite as well. I think I'm gonna do it like this. Yeah, I'm gonna mute him. <laughs> I'm gonna do this. Uh, we draw Remembrance, which is actually pretty neat. And so is Flash of Brilliance. The problem is Calling Strike. That's basically the issue. I need just a moment. Remember me. Kinda wish I kept the Mage Seeker Persuader now. Patience. Patience. I think I can just hold back for a little bit. We have remember. We are taking quite a big hit here, but... Alright, we get the worst one. What you gonna do? But at least we have a solid blocker at this point. We have a, a unit with 5 attack as well. I mean, all of them have 5 attack, right? Yeah, so... <laughs> <laughs> we got the worst one. There's no. They're out there. There's no way around it. I don't want to attack into an Avarice's entry because that that opens me up for a for a uh, brittle seal. Something I want to generally avoid. It can't be. Ah, Jesus Christ. Uh, it's a lot of pressure. Early on, I think uh, succession is my best play. Uh, I have to think this through for a little bit. If we trade you into you, that's sort of 8, 10, 11 damage. That's roughly that point. That's, that's kind of insane. And if he has a calling strike, he undoes, undoes that. Yeah, secession has to happen. Acceptable. Elixir of Iron. Brosty. Alright. They walked around. Imminently logical. Nothing escapes my way. So we play that. He's already played a Brutal Steel. That Brutal Steel that he wasted earlier. Probably regretting it at this point. 
managed to keep Heimerdinger alive, and now it's a matter of survival. We have the blockers. Would love to be able to set up Lux. Carved from the savage cold. Yeah, that's a problem. I'm so low. If I play you, I have five blockers. It's, it's really risky, right? And engines don't determine themselves. Full blast! I refuse. Look out there! I really don't want him to draw extra cards. I value this more because of uh, potential reckoning. Ah. Uh, Stay back. I think I'm better off preventing a little bit more damage. Everywhere I go, the light follows. We're trying to stabilize here, uh, but we're struggling. That Sejuani was uh, pretty rough. I'm gonna start picking off his board. No the problem with me taking the damage there is that I'm 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 at brutal steel range now. Okay. Please don't tell me you have a a calming strike on top of that. You drew. Oh my god. Oh my god. Man, this guy is this guy has been top decking like crazy, dude. Ah, that sucks. Got an access to all of this shit. I can't purify my my own champion, unfortunately. And I just I just don't see how I survived this attack. I, I I basically needed I needed uh 
I needed my Lux to live there. Like, the fact that he was able to answer both of my engines is really my our undoing here. I cry every time. Um... My aim is true! I will unite the Freljord. He ran out of gas, too, man, but it's just... Alright, GG. Yeah, purify can counter a frostbite, but not if it's on your champion. <laughs> Which I, I kind of wish. I kind of wish I could purify my own champions, but yeah. you can't ask everything out of a card. Uh, they, they didn't really uh, have our back there, but that's not a terrible matchup. It's just a, like they have like you know three calling strikes, and then it, we countered one of them, right? But our opponent just drew like two calling strikes and a reckoning, and just as as he was running out of gas too, so. I, I think we're pretty unlucky there, and uh, I, I really think that's a, like a very winnable matchup uh, if we have another shot at it, so Next round, okay So I guess we got a rematch going on and that makes me very happy. I'm gonna do a full mulligan All right, that looks better All right, sal salty run back. Let's go Let's go. We're not gonna do anything the, the first couple of turns. We're gonna play reactively. We have a counter for, for that. I'm gonna go for a... Secession. Just generate a body on the board. That's interesting. Perhaps a little bit of karma? Um, I'm gonna go for an attack, I think. Is that my best play? Like, I, I could Remembrance. Why not Remembrance? Archer. But I can always Thermo Beam that. I'm gonna go for it. This this enables... This activates my... This. I need just a moment. I'm gonna keep Thermogenic Beam. I can hit bigger things with it. Get a nice hit off on him. He must have a bunch of spells in his hand. I'd rather resort to Mystic Shot for something like this. Ranger's Resolve is kind of useless in this matchup. That's the problem with like having a bunch of tech cards. Like they you become. The right to call themselves Trifarian. So Mystic Shot that. I need to find an easier time to set up Lux. If he has a Calling Strike... So he needs a Calling Strike plus double Flash Freeze. Or an Archer. And a Flash Freeze. So I'm setting him Lux. Because he can't... He can't call, like, Lux is out of Calling Strike range, so he needs support for it. And we have the counter for Calling Strike. Not and ready. Well, ain't that fucking obnoxious. All right, let's get rid of the archer. Attack formation. I know a challenge when I see one. Take my helmet. Feels so good. All the world on one arrow. That feels clean, boy. I have to make sure Lux is healthy, though. I, 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 I really have to avoid brittle steel onto Calling Strike. Bow to no one. smart about this we're going for you know just uh, just as I was saying about being smart about it Let's think here. Stand together. 
together. Bristle, attack! As the arrow flies, ride onward! Face me! BFFs. BFFs forever. Alright, let's force the frostbite here. Or frostbites. There's the brittle steel. Alright. We have a surprise relentless pursuit here. Just gotta be wise about it. How many calling strikes has that been? One, right? One calling strike. <laughs> oh, sweet, sweet vengeance. Sweet, sweet vengeance, baby. There we go. The superior tactic is to never give up. For once, I'll accept the cheesiness, Lux. I will embrace it. Never give up, boys. There we go. That was a. I'm pretty sure that was the same guy too. I mean, he had a very weird hand, right? Like he probably had a bunch of spells. And I mean, considering how he top decked that last game, I think that was a little bit of karma. I think the first game we were really close to stabilizing, but the fact that he he managed to uh, just you know constantly answer our engines, like every, even though we countered the first calling strike, he had like the reckoning and then the second one, like. Just so you guys understand, that that deck runs three calling strikes and one reckoning. Like, that's a standard list, right? His could be different. He could run two. Uh, you never go three. That's kind of crazy. But, uh, yeah, I, I just felt like I got pretty unlucky considering I had a tremendous card advantage over him. But, you know, it happens. You know, it's 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 a card game. Like Sometimes it's going to roll like that. And that's the weakness of this deck. If, you're, if your engines keep getting shut down again and again, uh, it could be difficult to get the ball rolling, right? But... Just need one of them to stick around, and then the value is just insane, man. I I, I love I love Heimerdinger with the Lens Pursuit. I think it's it's so underrated, and uh, I just gotta give a few shoutouts to the MVP, Rising Spell Force, countering two calling strikes in today's video. Rising Spell Force for Ash, Purify for They Who Endure. I I just really like the I put a lot of thought behind this deck, uh, and I wanted to get my deck building mojo back. <laughs> like, I, that just sounds weird to play like that, but I, I wanted to get deck building again, you know, I, I, I took a big enough of a break and the new expansion is coming and I want to make sure that I'm sharp at it, you know, and I'm pretty proud of this list, honestly, you guys can check it out, uh, I was playing with it all, all night yesterday, and yeah, let me know what you guys think, I, I had a lot of fun playing with this and that's good enough for a live, like we're almost at 50 minutes, uh, I'm gonna end the video by, um, with a, a little bit of a, a minor ramble, uh, I didn't want to talk about this, uh, at the beginning of the video, because most of you just want to see, you know, the content and the deck list, the deck guide and the gameplay, whatever it is you want to see. Like, this is uh, this is more geared towards people who watch me uh, on Twitch, right? And I, I know that's not everybody watching me here. Um, how, how do I how do I say this without like going on a huge like rant, right? And I, I don't mean rant like as 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 if like I'm not angry or anything. It's just like I. I don't want to like talk too much uh, at the end of the video here, but basically, um, I've I haven't been in the greatest place mentally uh, this August. It's been rough. Uh, nothing specific. Uh, I, I'm not gonna like delve into personal things in my in my life, but I I can say that it's it's nobody's fault but my own. Um, I'm uh, my my how do I say this? My, my brain is a little bit weird. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know how to explain this without coming off like I'm, I'm crazy or something. But I just, I have my ups and I have my downs. Just like every other human being out there. Um, uh, sometimes I struggle with, with uh, certain aspects of, of mental health here and there. Uh, I, I don't really talk too much about it. And I think ultimately this is something that to a certain degree everybody deals with. 
But uh, in my case, it's kind of like a balloon that's blowing up and it keeps, you know, inflating and everything is fine until it pops and then shit just kind of like hits the fan and I've been struggling a lot with uh, streaming because of it. Uh, I've noticed that uh, my, my patience and my temper, amongst other things, have not been where I wanted to be. So I, I feel like, I feel very frustrated a lot of times when I stream with uh, a certain portion of my Twitch chat, you know? I mean, it's one of the things that comes with, like, you growing as a streamer, right? Like, we reach really high numbers. And I I feel like lately... Like, I had a bit of a bad experience in my last stream towards the end. Um, I found it really frustrating, and I, I don't believe I should have been that frustrated by it. And because I don't believe that I should have been that frustrated by it, that, that leads me to believe that I... There's an issue, right? So what I'm trying to say is um, I'm, I'm done like making promises for Twitch. I am going to stream when I feel like streaming. And that's how it's going to be for the future. Obviously, I'm going to be streaming a lot when the expansion hits. But I'm going to always prioritize my YouTube channel. And I missed live recording like this. You know, I, I think the quality is much higher. Uh, I explain my plays much better, and I think I think you guys prefer it this way. Let me know, by the way, what you prefer. But I, I think it's it's you know a given that the quality is always higher when you live record instead of just picking from Twitch. So YouTube will always be my priority. Is what makes me ha uh, most happy. Like I, I just I love recording. Uh, I also love taking my time designing my decks and not feeling pressured, which is something that I apply to myself when I'm streaming. Like, I feel, like, rushed sometimes because, you know, people get bored when I'm deck building or, or things. And I don't know. I, I, I just feel like I need to do things the way I want to do them for a while. Uh, I need to stop compromising and, and just doing what others want of me in that regard. And I just need to just take the, the wheel and do whatever I want. I promised the League of Legends stream. I'm, I'm probably not going to do it in the foreseeable future. I played the game. I enjoy it. But I am, like, a complete noob. And I don't think I'd have, I have anything to contribute with that. Uh, personally, so I don't want to do it, so I'm not, I'm not going to do it. Uh, I have no, even though I said I was going to do it, I'm not going to force myself out of some sort of sense of obligation, basically. And like I said, I'm, I'm for my own sake, I'm going to, I'm going to do things my way, right? And that, that's basically it, really. Uh, I, I love recording. I love deck building. I, I love this game. I love card games in general, and I love what I do, and I feel very lucky. But sometimes even people like me who seem like we have everything going on for us and we have the ideal life, it turns out that life is not a, as ideal as you would think. You know, it's hard to see from the outside if you have like a, you know, a nine to five job in, in like a, an office or whatever and you're and you feel like there's no way like I could relate to that. But I've, I've been on both sides of it and everything yeah, life is just tough, man. And even when things uh, seem to be going well for you. You, you, you think that you're going to be happy because of it, but you're not. Because the human brain doesn't work that way. And I think that's one of... That, that's, that's an issue that a lot of people are struggling with nowadays. And I, I guess, you know... It's important for me to, like, speak out and be honest about... Like, I, the fact that it affects me, too. You know, a lot of people think I'm happy all the time, and I'm not. I'm a human being. I'm, I'm, I get very happy, and I get very sad. Sometimes I'm, I'm doing great. Sometimes I'm not doing so great. And you just move on, right? You just keep pushing forward. But... I struggle too, and you know, even though I have the ideal job and I love what I do and I feel super lucky, it's a grind sometimes. Uh, I have certain expectations I feel like I, I I need to meet. Like you know, sometimes creativity is not quite as strong. You know, it, it comes and goes, and I make do. But just want to let you know that I I struggle too. You know, and it's it's okay to admit that. It's fine. Like, I, I don't think any... If, if a human being is happy, like, 100% of the time, uh, honestly, they, they, they have, like, a, a, a brain tumor or something because that's just not... I, I, no offense or anything, but it, that's just not normal. Like, humans, you know... Life is a roller coaster, I guess. <laughs> it's, it's, sorry, sorry about the weird ramble here. I just want to, like, explain, you know, what's been going on, why I haven't been as consistent with Twitch, what's going through my head, and uh and that's basically it i really appreciate you guys sticking around and supporting me even though uh you know I've, I've definitely been lacking in consistency these these past couple of months but i'll i'll make it up to you 
And that's basically it. Have a solid day. Have a solid day. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. And just let you know that I, I, I appreciate your support. I, I really do. And I will see you guys tomorrow.